A lot of people don't understand why the Niners seemingly have written off Trey Lance after very little game action because Mm -hmm. that's football. I mean, you need to get on the field. It's a very different sport than practice. But I think what people sort of allude to, you you hear like uh, people close to the team, the play-by-play announcer, Greg Pop, everyone who's close that you think Mm -hmm. might have an ear or it's kind of insinuates it's not good. It's really like, okay, okay. And so the only thing that that could mean is that in practice, behind closed doors, because only you know a few weeks of practice are open to the media year, most of the practices are closed, especially when the season starts, that it must not be good. Yeah. And it, what's crazy is that, to me, I would think like, okay, but that's just practice. Like, you're supposed to be working on things. You're supposed to get things wrong. And it's not really football that can't touch you. Some people are quote-unquote gamers, like Jimmy Garoppolo. But, mm-hmm. but... I think this whole practice thing is really big deal for Kyle Shanahan. Yes, and, you yes. know, Jimmy Garoppolo was sort of forced on him. He, he proved himself. He proved he was a gamer before he proved that he was a bad practice player. So I think the Niners had to live with it. But with Trey, they don't. Explain this. Well, I feel I, it's been racking my brain to try to make sense of um, what they see that I don't see. Because I'm not I'm not a professional. Right. And obviously the 49ers brass and coaching staff is telling us that they don't believe in what Trey brings to even push him out as the starter to even represent the the investment that they put in him. It's like he haven't he hasn't played well enough in practice to like earn the yeah, right to and, go in the field. They have that kind of standard. Played, he's only played four games. And mm-hmm. for me, it has to be what you see in practice. Um, and it has to be what is going on in those periods where With our scheme, you have to understand that we're not – we have to start looking at the context of why Trey is here. I understand that we were told that Trey is here to be a franchise quarterback, that he's here to overshoot the mark. But really, what Trey is here for is to fit in and to to execute the scheme. That, that's that's what, and, and that's why Justin Fields ultimately isn't here. They felt he couldn't do that, even though he's objectively a better athlete than Trey Lance. Right. If this no was offense. about upside and was if it's, this was about making everything yeah. at the best service of your asset, then I fields. feel like we wouldn't have a discussion. But this fields. is about yeah. the scheme. And right. more oftentimes than not, you're going to see what you don't like in an offense in practice. And mm-hmm. quite honestly, being able to get in a game and show off script talent and to be able to break script and get out of the pocket and make things happen – um, in some organizations, that would be valued. That would be something mm-hmm. that they would actually prop and push forward and nurture but it, and nurture. But it seems yeah. like that encourage is, that. Yeah, I feel like that is something that is not encouraged and frowned upon. Point, Honestly, point, Brock Purdy, he, he, he said, look, I need to do less of that you, next year. Grant, if you take another point out of my mouth. Again, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> They're like, yeah, he made a lot of nice plays. He needs to make fewer plays next year. I love that. Case that, was, point, that was great. One of yeah. the great, one of the one of the best things that we liked about Brock is how he operated mm-hmm. the offense. But what he showed us that was outside of what he gave us in processing was his off script ability. The fact that he, he was wasn't just a sitting a duck. He wasn't sitting. He was better off script. Yes. The, the longer he had the ball, the better. The, I mean, the more dangerous he became. Sorry. I mean, let's let's fanboy for a minute. If Brandon yeah. IU catches that backside, dude, dog, that was yeah. one of the and nasty. that's the thing. Like, we're all calling Brandon Ayuk like Tory Holt, and he's like up next and stuff. It's like, man, you need to cut out the drops, dog. Bro, it was need so to. that's nasty. the one thing. But yeah, that's that's the beautiful stuff that we like out of Brock. But if you listen to Brock, when Brock talks about feedback, uh, yep. points of improvement, he talks yep. about. I don't go to the ball. So I don't go with the ball sometimes where Kyle wants me to go with the ball. I need to calm down. I need to calm uh-huh. down with freelancing and getting out Play of the his way. So much. Play, Play it his way. Play it his way, not my way. Exactly. Play it his way. And uh-huh. if Brock is finding himself yeah. to have to play inside the confines of the offense, imagine what a guy with Trey Lance's physical ability has to do to stay right. inside the offense. So He has to I, play like Nick Mullins. I feel like I feel like what we're seeing from what what we're not getting out of Trey is what they're seeing in practice. And I feel right. like to again to even but that's it. to piggyback onto the quarterback fart, the quarterback competition farce is that it's not about who's the best. It's not about who can who can be blossomed and nurtured into 
what they're supposed to be. It's about who operates this offense the best, who puts the ball where Kyle wants the ball. And that's, that's such, and that's why he can't find the quarterback. He can't find the friend. Why does Kyle always love the backup quarterback? Because the backup quarterback, a lot of times, not. is the guy who's great in practice. He's great in practice. There's, he can't get touched. He does everything right. He's studied. And then the game comes and he craps his pants. I'm sorry, but let me go back to Kyle had a real gamer in Colin Kaepernick, okay? Guy who had won games, been to the playoffs, been to the Super Bowl. Didn't want him. Got rid of him. Brought in Brian Hoyer, yep. a backup quarterback. Brian Hoyer came into camp, and I swear I'd never seen a, a quarterback play that well in practice in my life. Mm -hmm. So aggressive. Not just efficient, but gunning the ball Tactile. down the field. Every single day hitting deep shots down the field to Marquise Good. I'm like, man, this dude is Tom Brady. Game started, ooh, he was Brian Hoyer. So if you're going to base all of your evaluations of quarterbacks on what they do in practice, you're always going to love Nick Mullins. Brock Poy I mean, uh, you know, Brian Hoyer. I'm saying. And to add another point, and to add another point, Iggy, what did we hear during those? Dur let's let's go back to when Trey was the starter, right? The, mm -hmm. the training camp, right? Mm -hmm. it, what did we keep hearing throughout the entire training camp? He can only get better. He's going against the number one defense in the league, right? right. He's always like Trey. Trey, if this is this is always this is only going to get better. If he can't make it here, then you would almost think that it. It almost falls into our narrative where if you can, if you feel like your quarterback who you're grooming is seeing the best of the best already, then why would if I, let's do it their way? Why would I roll you out if you can't yeah. if you can't beat our guys who's the number yeah. one defense in the league? Why would I roll you out, right? And yeah. I mean, I feel we that's a that's a very irrational decision, but but let, let, let's stick with this though. So they don't account for gamerness, right? They think that if you don't execute, if the if you're not putting the ball where it needs to go in practice, you're not going to do it in a game, and I don't want you to go out there and freelance. Okay, fair enough. That's one way to project and evaluate a question. That's a terrible way to do it, but that's one way. Mm -hmm. So that's why when Trey gets hurt week two, Jimmy Garoppolo replaces him, not Brock Purdy. Because Brock Purdy isn't necessarily a tactician from the pocket. He's a rookie. I mean, he's just learning, and Jimmy's been here. He's 30 years old. Okay, so Jimmy goes out and does his Jimmy thing. Mm -hmm. And then he gets hurt, and then Brock comes in, and the Niners don't know what to expect because they've been evaluating him in practice, and probably he's not as good as Jimmy in practice. But in games, he's way better than Jimmy, and he makes these plays, and he uses his legs, and he has this innate feel for where the rush is coming from, and he has this creativity and poise and confidence, and the Niners are like, wow, we didn't know he could do that. And it's like, yeah, because the yeah. game is different. Okay, you didn't see it coming with Brock. He, he he impressed you with his gamerness, and now like you're writing off Trey in practice. Like, come on, guys, be serious. Be serious. Yeah. yeah. Be serious. I mean, practice is not football. It's practice not. It's not football. It's really not. I mean, and I understand that we have an amazing uh, we have an amazing team, man. But we got to risk it just like everybody else. We yep. got to roll our guy out on the field just like everybody else. And we can't sit back and future proof and put him behind closed doors and think that we're just better than the process. You know, that's why that's one of the reasons why we're so nervous about the, the quarterback situation is because the only way that we're really going to know Brock is OK is when he gets on the field. Right. They can tell us anything in practice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And stays on so the, field. It goes the funny thing ways. is. The, the the kind of quarterback the Niners like, the guy who's just nails in practice, Brian Greasy. Hmm. That's who they're looking for. Yeah. That's who they want. And that's who the Shanahan's have been have been gravitating toward for since 1999. Yeah. Because, again, like, J John Elway goes off script, makes a play, they can't take credit. Steve Young, same thing. They're not in the Hall of Fame. Mike's not in the Hall of Fame. And well, so they feel they can win with a Brian Greasy type, and they've been trying forever, man. Forever. Let's go with Let's go with narratives. When you think when you think the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, nobody says Patrick Mahomes True. has an amazing offense. When no. you look at Joe Burrow in Cincinnati, nobody says Cincinnati's winning because of their scheme. When yep. you look at the Eagles and you see how they're running the ball all over the place and Jalen Hurts is using the power run game and they're accentuating all of his skills. And you see that yep. the system is 100% about him. Nobody's yep. talking about that scheme. When you no. look at Justin Herbert, out there in out there in um, LA, nobody's talking about the scheme. 
Right. We are the only team where when right. they talk about our success and when it's time Kyle's for offense. us to win the Super Bowl, we bring in the X's Kyle's numbers. offense. It's Kyle's it's offense. Scheme. Yeah. Yeah. It's not in Kansas City. It's not Andy Reid's offense. It's Patrick Mahomes' offense. Okay? It's his in team. Cincinnati's, it's, it's Joe Burrow's Mahomes offense. Yeah, it's his it's team. His team. Right. 